Okay, here we are with the 2011 iMac and uh, Parallels 8 running uh, on Windows 8, or rather Windows 8 running on Parallels 8. So let's have a quick look at the performance um, and how they fix the, the Windows interface for the menus uh, and how it looks in coherence. So we're just going to fire at Parallels, I'll just make sure I've got the right one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, and what we're going to do is fire up this machine here. Now this is a Windows 8 Enterprise Edition, 64-bit. Uh, it's running with eight cores and four gig of RAM, so it should be relatively quick on a, on a machine like this. So, so let's fire it up and uh, see what happens. There we are. You can see it's very, very quick to fire up and start. So what we'll do is just log in as my um, my demo user here. Obviously we're running in full screen mode at the moment, but we'll have a look at um, coherence in a second. So this is our main Windows 8 interface. We've still got the desktop at the back here, uh, and of course you've got the taskbar down the bottom if you want to use that. So let's fire up some apps and just see how quick it is. But let's start with Word. Ooh link now we don't need that so there's word let's fire up excel as well uh, what else we got Visio, powerpoint project as you can see it's very very snappy it's very very fast um, to be fair you'd expect it to be on a machine like this um, you know it's a very powerful mac um, and if we look at the performance index or the, sorry the windows experience index there we go, you see it's pretty high, it's got 4 gig of RAM allocated, 8 cores, uh, and somebody wants me to go to the pub. Okay, so, very, very fast. Now, let, let's have a look at coherence, because that, that can be quite interesting. So, th this is where the problems were experienced with Parallel 7, because there was issues with um, the way the, uh, the Metro, or the non-Metro interface, uh, actually worked in the coherence mode. So, what I'm going to do is just exit out of full screen, so there we are, we're running in a window now. I'm just going to dump it into coherence. So let's have a look at the effect there. There we go. Now, in coherence mode, you'll notice that I've also got the taskbar available down the bottom. This is one of the options available on the view menu. So I, I can turn it off if you want. Um, and then what you have here on the on the taskbar, on the Mac taskbar, is the ability to fire up the, the Metro interface, or rather the non-Metro. It still dominates the desktop, um, but what it doesn't do is um, get all mixed up with the screen right, so it doesn't start overlaying windows, that sort of stuff. A lot of that, um, the hangover in, in Parallel 7 with Windows 8, um, the interface just didn't work. It ended up overwriting some windows um, and just generally not working. But now you can see that it, it, it does work, it is clean, we can fire up our applications. Okay, so again the performance is still very snappy. So what else? What else can we run? Okay, it's all accessible from the command key, by the way. It's the equivalent of the Windows key, pretty much. Okay, so it's all very, very fast. Now you can see it does work. Um, it's very effective, and now it makes it usable. Now for me, the the feature I do particularly like, um, which I think used to be there on older versions of Parallels, but it's the ability to be able to show the uh, Windows taskbar on the bottom. So if, like me, you have your your Mac um, dock on the left, it's certainly easier on my laptop anyway, um, having the taskbar on the bottom makes sense because I can actually easily access all of my Mac applications as well as all of my Windows apps very, very quickly, very, very easily. It works and it works well. It certainly made coherence usable for me in Windows 8, whereas previously I just don't believe it was. So. What we'll do then is we'll just switch back into full screen. There we go. You'll see that full screen mode is um, properly integrated into spaces, or uh, sorry, mission control as it is called now. So you can swipe between them. Um, so the only other thing that's worth looking at then is the speed at which you can suspend and come out of suspension. So let's suspend this machine. In fact, let's fire up a couple of apps first before we do that.
There we go, we've got a number of amps running now. So so let's just suspend this machine and then we'll drop it out of suspension and see see what it looks like. So I'm going to virtual machine, click suspend, off it goes. There we go, it's done. Very, very quick to suspend. Um, I end up suspending all my machines pretty much now rather than uh, shutting them down. So let's have a look and see how long it takes to start up. There we go, and we're back and running again. So again, it's very, very quick, and it makes the environment incredibly usable. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. So it certainly works. Now, that's not to say there aren't some problems. Um, now, just to be clear, I, I've replicated this issue between both my iMac and my my MacBook Pro desktop, so I know it's um, an issue that affects both of them. Um, this iMac is currently running 10.8.2, which is a an Apple beta release, whereas my MacBook is on the the release 10.8.1 um, seed. But this problem exists on both. And what I'm going to do is show you how sometimes with the full screen apps you can get in the situation where you can't use one of the full screen apps. So what I'm going to do is just drop into coherence. There we go. So now in coherence mode, you can see we've got the taskbar at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is fire up a full screen app from the Metro, or sorry, the non-Metro interface. Now this doesn't happen every time, um, so it'll be interesting to see if it happens this time. So there we go, there's our Metro, oh, sorry, non-Metro menu. I'm going to start the Bing application there. You'll see that it's switched to a full screen. There we go, so we get to type in what we want. There's some weird little graphics artifacts that seem to appear on here. Um, and then disappear when you go near them. So let's try and type something into the search. So it says enter your search. I'm going to click on that box. Disappears. Right. So I can no longer type on it. I can switch back to the screen, but it won't let me use it. Okay. Now it gets a bit more confusing as well if I have other apps running. So say for example if I've got Excel running in coherence, I want to switch back to my Bing screen and, and do um, some search. Now can you see how we're starting to get that graphics artifact issue back? Instead of switching to the full screen Bing, which is over here, it's basically overwritten my Excel coherence window with that full screen application. Okay. Now I, I can simulate that with various other full screen apps, so it just seems to get um, get itself into trouble with stuff like that. Now like I said, I have replicated it on my MacBook Pro, but I'm sure Parallels will issue an update pretty soon. Um, they're very good at, at sorting out that sort of stuff, and obviously it's a, a day zero release for Parallel 8, Parallels 8. If I drop it into um, either into a window, or if we just stick it back into full screen mode there, we don't get the issue. Obviously I can then do whatever I want with, with Bing. Okay, um, so yeah, in coherence, it's it's not you know, totally a clean story as yet. There are still a few issues with it, um, but I'm sure Parallels will get around to fixing those. But other than that, it's a great release. I, I'm incredibly pleased with it. I, th I think it's um, it's made Windows 8 usable in virtualization and certainly in coherence mode anyway. I'll just shut that down. What I'll do at some point as well is, is run a side-by-side -side comparisons with the same machines running in VMware Fusion 5, so we can have a look and see what the differences are there as well. Um, but in the meantime, I, I think it's a, a good upgrade. It, certainly if you want to be using Windows 8 on your OS 10, then Parallels 8 is the way to go.